Hello everyone! Welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are doing well and fabulous. We're going to be having a mukbang. Hold on, we need a thumbnail. Have to, yeah, you have to get the thumbnails right, right? So today I'm having these noodles. It's called the Nissan Jekikara Ramen. This is hot mushroom. Rasa Jamur Pedas. I don't know if I'm saying that right. <laughs> this is the noodles. They are from Ting Tang. And yeah, I'm excited to eat these. It's gonna be delish. So this is like a new noodle that they sent me because you guys know I am a noodle connoisseur. And I thought let's just chat today. We haven't had a mukbang in a while. Um, this is the first time I'm trying the specific flavor. I tried the carbonara flavor. It's really nice, not as nice as the Samyang, but yeah, I thought let's have a mukbang. I'm gonna talk to you guys. I am spilling all over my sauce because I left some extra sauce in these noodles today. So anyway, um, and yeah, let's get into it. Let's try the noodles, shall we? You know what this noodle texture reminds me of? It reminds me of the 414, 514s from Simply Asia. If you haven't tried that noodle, it's live. Pretty much, it's live. So, I'm sure you guys have realized as of recently, I've just been on this self-love journey. Um, just loving myself and appreciating myself and being there for myself in ways that I haven't previously and let me tell you what kind of encouraged that, okay? I feel like these noodles are a bit on the salty side, but the spice is really doable. It looks like there's chili flakes in here. But the spice is really good. Like, it's not as hot as Samyang. So, let's start my self-love journey. Um, I think I've always been comfortable in who I am. But there's things I didn't like about myself. Like, I didn't like my skin. I didn't like my body. I didn't like my tummy. I didn't like my back. I hated my back, so I put a tattoo on my back. And there were so many insecurities that I didn't really like that I decided to change by doing something about it. But by doing all of these things, I also began to love myself. Because I realized that this is who I am. You know, yes, I may put a tattoo on the back, on my back to cover up my acne scars, but it doesn't cover up my acne scars fully. At the end of the day, this is who I am, you know? And it just really became like a, a realization for me, like... I'm a remarkable human being. Why do I feel like I'm not good enough? And I suffer really severely sometimes with anxiety and depression and I just get in this deep dark hole that I'm able to luckily pull myself out of. But sometimes it just gets so deep and dark that you're like, you know, it's that dark voice in your head telling you you're not good enough and you're not pretty enough and you'll never be skinny enough and you'll never have the perfect body. And the more these voices kept telling that to me, the more I kept saying yes. I do, ha I do have flawed skin. I probably will never be skinny enough. But I love myself because of it. And so those dark voices in my head turned into good voices in my head. Because I didn't feed into the negativity. And I just wanted to love myself holistically. You know, there's so many times where I was like trying to film this video and I was like, where do I start? Where do I start telling people what this journey has been like? You know, where do you even start? I think the place where you start is within. Like you need to find what's making you feel bad about yourself and change those negative bad voices and change that positive energy into something that you know is going to benefit you in the future. I know it's hard. I know it's hard to sit with yourself and be like, yeah, I'm not perfect and all these other things. But it's worth it to sit with yourself and work on yourself and realize that a lot of what you're doing right now is enabling a lot of other behavior that you're encouraging other people in your life to do. So... When you have self-love for yourself, you stop people from doing things that you don't appreciate or t taking you for granted, you know? And 
I've had some really amazing friends in this lifetime that have taught me that I need to set up boundaries. You know, you can't let people walk all over you. And, you know, I can be a big pushover sometimes. Like, I can really be a big pushover. And I am such a generous friend. Like, I don't count when I do things for people. I don't believe it. If, if I have to do something for you and then count how many times I did that nice thing for you, what kind of a friend would I be if I did that? So I don't believe in doing that to people. That's not who I am as a person and I don't appreciate that being done to me either, you know? Like if you wouldn't like it done to you, don't do it to other people. It's as simple as that. But this whole self-love journey, like I would look at myself in the mirror and just be so happy with who, so unhappy with who was staring back at me. And I never wanted to feel like that again. I mean, you see so many beautiful girls on TikTok. What do they even call them? Full-figured models. And they are so beautiful. And I was like, look at how much confidence this person has. And even though I'm not there, why, why can't I look in the mirror and be like, oh my God, I'm perfect. And I promise you, once you decide to see yourself with different eyes and you decide to love yourself and love your flaws, your stretch marks become perfect. Your hip dips become perfect. Your pigmentation between your thighs becomes perfect. I don't claim to be perfect. I will probably never be perfect. And I think loving your imperfections is where you need to start with your self-love journey. It's a hard journey, you guys. Nobody said this journey was easy. Nobody ever claims that this journey is easy either. But to sit down and have a conversation about it, sometimes you don't even know where to start because it's like, it's taken so many things to get to this point in life, you know? These noodles are nice. I think they need like they need to be like a little soupy though, because they're a little bit salty. But maybe that's how these noodles are made. Also, I'm bad at using chopsticks, so I'm practicing with my noodles. This definitely feel like a young 514. Like this shape of noodle. It's spicy. It's spicy. It's spicy. It's spicy. Okay, so, um, yeah, I would definitely say start with your flaws, and, you know, if you are happy doing something, do it, like you guys know I went for my fat, fat lipolysis, and obviously I'm working out to maintain the fatless belly area. But my belly fat is something that always, always, always was a struggle for me. And I guess because I sort of have big boobs, like you can't really, like I'm conscious of it. But if other people had to look at me, they'd be like, ooh, she has a nice body, you know. But for me, it's like, I don't really want a flabby tummy, you know. I want a body that like looks lean, looks nice. You know, I want, I've always wanted a flat tummy and I've never had one. So that was one of my goals to work on that. And working on yourself doesn't mean you hate things. Working on yourself means that you love yourself and you're working to where you want to go, which I think is important. And also, I think something that I haven't really been hard on myself about is like saying ugly things to myself. I notice though some people can be in those mindsets and say ugly things to themselves. Try not do that stuff. Be kind to yourself. Show yourself kindness. The same kindness you show everybody else, show yourself that same kindness. Because I promise you, you yourself need it more than anybody else does. You need that kindness. So I am learning to be kind on myself, being more gentle on myself. Because 
there's times when I'm really not a nice person to myself and it may be something as simple as taking myself for granted. The fact that I'm able to still be a fully functioning adult in a pandemic, I take that for granted. And I kind of just like, oh yeah, you know, I can, I'm can. i able to do it and just brush it under the rug. No, be proud of your achievements. Sit down and be like, girl, you are doing amazing things. Pip talk to yourself, talk to yourself. Let yourself know that you are doing something that your future self would be so proud of. And I feel like when you sit down and you really just come to terms with everything that you've achieved and, you know, just be positive with yourself and be kind with yourself, it really changes your whole perspective. When you see yourself as a separate person, like sometimes I look at my, my pictures on social media and I'm like, girl, what are you going to show your kids these pictures? And they're going to be like, that's my mama. That's my mama, you know, and yeah, we're doing these things to make our future selves proud and to make our future kids happy and, and know that and show our future kids how bomb we were back in the day. And also, I kept thinking to myself, you know, I am the kind of auntie that will say to my niece, oh girl, wear your bikini, wear your swimsuit, live your best life, go do this, go do that. And I thought to myself, it's fine because I'm an auntie you know and she's probably seen pictures of her mom in a bikini because her mom had a good body when she was younger my sister but how can i tell my kids when i have my kids to wear a two-piece bikini and live their best life when i myself am not happy wearing a two-piece bikini when i myself am not happy with my body so i think for me it's just a long-term thing like what am i going to teach my kids, what am I going to teach my niece and nephew about loving themselves if I can't do it? And, you know, I'm such a sentimental person like that. Like if, like if I'm doing something, it mustn't just benefit me. It must benefit the generations to come. And to be honest, like I didn't have like an insane, great body image. You know, my mom was full figured. My sister was super skinny and I was their medium size, you know, but it wasn't like you're allowed to wear anything you want to wear, you know? It was like, oh, you mustn't wear super short things. But I mean, I wear crop tops and short things and I don't care because it's my body. And I worked hard to be comfortable in my body. And that's when I started wearing crop tops and becoming comfortable in my body. And if you like fashion, why shouldn't you be able to wear what you want to wear? So for me, it's like I love fashion and I love seeing these empowering images of people in bikinis and, you know, it's empowering to me and for me to just sit back and be like, oh yeah, it's enough for somebody else to empower me. Why can't I empower myself by wearing a two-piece bikini? There's a difference between being sexy and being too much. And we're allowed to be sexy. We're allowed to feel our oats, for the lack of a better word. And we are allowed to feel comfortable. And the thing is, society has made us feel like we're not allowed to feel sexy. And for a long time, I think a couple of years ago, my brother said when I had two voiceovers, I need to stop using my sexy voice. And I was like, what is that? You know, like I was so taken aback. I was like, what does he mean I need to use my sexy voice? You know? But as I'm getting older, I realize that there's a side of me that wants to feel empowered by wearing a two-piece bikini, you know? And even on the beach, like my dad was there, my sister was there, and I didn't care. I was just there living my best life. I even go swim in my two-piece bikini with my niece and nephew. And at the end of the day, like those small things for me mean a lot because it's taken a lot for me to get to that point, to get comfortable with all my stretch marks and all my pigmentation on the various areas of my body to be able to just take off that cover up and get into the pool and enjoy and live my life at the end of the day that's what I'm trying to do is just live my life without looking back because I don't want to look back when I'm 50 and be like I had such an amazing body and I didn't take advantage of it when I had no kids and when I had less stretch marks and less belly fat I didn't take advantage of my body and that's the life I'm trying to live I think we all learn things of different parts of our life and then we look back and there's always some regret and for my entire life, I never wanted to look back and regret anything. So now in my 20s, I am really living that. I don't want to look back and think, I was so ungrateful when I had what I had. And I'm really just trying to live my best life. 
being the best version of myself, working on myself and teaching people how to love me because if you don't love yourself, how many are you going to love somebody else? Thank you, RuPaul. RuPaul is amazing. And thebomb.com. And I think watching Drag Race has also really just taught me to just love myself. Unconditionally. You know? This whole energy of like not loving yourself. And being bad to yourself but yet being kind to everyone else. It just doesn't float my boat anymore. You know? And one of the, the ways that I self care and show myself that I love myself is I stop putting pressure on myself because I know what I'm capable of. And I stopped saying to myself that, oh, more brand deals will come when I reach 25K or when I reach 20K on YouTube. Maybe more brands will see my value. No, brands need to see my value now. I'm valuable now and I will continue to be valuable regardless whether it's in my work life, in my personal life, I am a valuable human being, you know? And I should stop downplaying that. Why am I downplaying how valuable I am? You know? It just doesn't make sense. And I know so many people don't look themselves in the mirror and say, you know what? You are doing an amazing job, sweetie. I know we all don't do that. We all just are like, nah. we're getting stuff done. We're working towards goals. But we need to take accountability for the things that we're able to do for ourselves and pat ourselves on the back for living life through a pandemic okay especially being single it's not easy being single in a pandemic because you feel very lonely it's like who do you talk about your who do you talk to about your concerns like i have not taken any bookings for january because of the high numbers who do you talk about this like who do you make these decisions with i've had to sit down with myself and say sinesh the numbers are high. Look at the stats. It's not safe for you to take bookings this month. Contact any clients you had. Tell them the situation. They will understand. I've had to have these conversations with myself. I've had to make these decisions by myself. And the fact that I can and think logically by myself and not need anyone to rely on is an accomplishment in itself. But that doesn't mean that just because you have a partner, that you're any less of a person for having a partner. I mean, I, trust me, if I could have the opportunity to have a relationship now in a pandemic, I would. However, I'm not going to have a relationship just to say I have one. That's not who I am. Okay? I'm not going to go out there and find a guy just to say I'm dating a guy. You know, that's not who I am. And I genuinely feel like when something doesn't feel right to me, it doesn't feel right to me. You know? So I won't do it. And it's all these things, these self-love things. It matters. How you treat yourself matters. If you feel like you don't need to be put in a position, or if you feel like you don't deserve to be put in a position, don't put yourself in that position. Treat yourself how you think you deserve to be treated and the moment you do that everything falls into place for you how you see yourself how other people see you i mean how many times have you guys commented oh my god sinesh you're glowing even without makeup it's because i have a newfound love for myself that i never had before you know and i'm sure you guys have seen my face change and my because I'm not somebody that shows my emotions a lot, but you can tell my emotions and what I'm going through by how I look in the face or how my eyes look. And I think it's very important to just be in touch with how you feel. Don't just push your feelings back just to make other people happy, you know? It's kind of hard to scoop with chip, chopsticks. Chopsticks. <laughs> that was delicious. Um, but yeah, I hope this video made a lot of sense to you guys. I hope that my point came across with how I feel and 
but just basically with my whole self-love journey i mean there's so many things i could talk about sorry you guys for the change in lighting there's so many things i could talk about but if you guys have any specific questions leave them down below and i will talk about them in the next video um but yeah i hope this guy i hope this was insightful i feel like every time i sit down and i sat down at least twice to film this video and i feel like i can never get my thoughts together and i can never get my feelings through but i feel like i've done somewhat of justice to this whole self-love journey today and i really hope that this inspires you guys to be the best version of yourself and i really hope it inspires you to just love yourself holistically so that you can teach other people how to so that you can teach other people how to love you as well thank you guys so much for watching i hope you guys have enjoyed don't forget to slay all day every day with amazon makeup and i'll talk to you guys in the next video Bye-bye!